Hey, Broadway World fans, Steve Schoenberg here with the amazing Mr. Michael Arden, who's directed the new revival of the incredible musical Once on this Island. Thanks for being here, Michael. I'm glad to be here. How are you? Very good. I saw the show last night. I told you that. And I absolutely love it. I never got to see the original. I had wanted to see it, but waited how many? 27 years, right? Since the first, right? Yeah. And here we are. So tell me, what, like, how was it that this came about for you to direct? Well, I, it's been a musical that I've loved for for a really long time. And uh, in 2001, when I had just moved to the city uh, uh, for school, uh, obviously September 11th occurred, and then there was an, a benefit concert that the, the Actors Fund and Broadway Cares put together with the original cast. And uh, it was at the Winter Garden Theater on the set of Mamma Mia. And I snagged a ticket and went to go see it. And I was a big fan of Ragtime mm -hmm. um, and had seen Ragtime and had heard some of the music from Once on this Island, but never seen, never seen it. And I left that theater transformed. I, 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 f I felt like it was one of the most exciting, magical, healing and restorative evenings I've ever spent in the theater. I think we, was, we were a city that was, was grieving in a major way. We were hurting and, and everyone was healed a little bit by, by that evening. And I was just blown away by it. And I, I thought, I want to do something with this, you know, and as, uh, you know, uh, a white gay boy, I, did, I was like, hmm, I don't know what I'll do with this or how, what part I'll play, but, uh, but uh, it was just, found a, a way, and then a few years later, we're opening on Broadway. And here you are, yeah. yeah. Not in a parking lot, but, but, nice. but at Circle in the Square, which is much nicer than a parking lot. So you're working with uh, Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty. What's that been like? What's that process been like? And how incredible for them that they have Anastasia open. We're having a resurgence of their amazing work. Yeah, the Macy's Parade was basically sponsored by them, I think, yeah. this year. Um, it's been amazing. I mean, they're, they're two of my musical theater heroes. Um, I you know, sat on the carpet in my house in Texas listening to Ragtime and crying when I was a kid. So um, it's been incredible to be around them, and, and they've been so involved and uh, excited and you know uh, really interested and and they even wrote some new music for this production so it's it's been really cool to to uh, get to kind of shake up their old work I think I've probably scared them quite a few times they're like what are you doing um, gotta go with the process but yeah you know it's like we're like a family and I'm like the rebellious child so sure, sure. we have our disagreements and our agreements but uh, we're all really proud of this production but you talked in the director's note you wrote about that disasters have struck right in our world right now and it's a time of of fear but also time to come together so what inspired that note i mean for directors getting such a little bit of real estate right because you see the performer on stage and you hear the music that was written but then the director who's created all this says things through the movement that you're seeing and everything, but they don't get to actually give you the words, except for a few graphs in the playbill. So how'd you decide on that? How'd you pare it down to that story? Uh, well, it was just important for me to just set up the production that we were doing of this play and why we were, we were doing it now. And I, I think it was important to the designers and the creative team and, and me that we take a look at how people rebuild after disaster. And so, so many people around the world have, are are currently and have recently and uh, you know been dealing with disaster whether it's economic whether it's social whether it's war whether it's hurricane or earthquakes um, and and so I, I, it felt really important that we're sort of a, a world that's uh, living in trauma right now which is kind of what the first the impulse that this story is being told out of is what I wanted to present this little girl like who has been through a disaster who then sees another storm headed her way and like and what do we do to calm them and to and to to help soothe and and heal and rebuild each other and we do that not only through you know hammer and nail but we do it mm -hmm. through the stories we tell and 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 the ways in which we inspire generations to come so uh it was important for me to like look at that really us to really look at that really sort of and in a non-romantic way, even though it's a musical, which is sort of the most romantic of mediums, it, uh, we wanted to present something as accurate and real and set in a real place, and we traveled to Haiti to research it. And uh, so I wanted to sort of let people know why we were telling this story in the way we were telling it. Sure. Well, so the 
the main character, Tsumun, she brings people together through love, right? And love sort of overcomes so many things. But there are the gods, the gods at play. Um, what do you think about that as a story of um, fate and things that are not in your control and what is actually in your control and the choices that you make and the behaviors that you convey to other people to share with one another and to be to be loving, but knowing that there's things out of your control. And we see that through the gods. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think what I love about this play is that it is about fate. And, like, she is sent on a journey. And, and ultimately, like, because of fate, she, spoiler alert, loses her life. Um, but it, it's sort of the play is about more than that. I think the play is about the good we do and the actions we take within our lives are bigger than our, our, the imprint of our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so Timu never saw the walls break down at the Hotel Plazome. She, she never got to live the life with the man she loved um, or see injustice undone. But, mm -hmm. but because of love, being that she chose love over, over the path of the sword or the, or the poison, you know, she, she, um, she sort of set into motion a ripple effect, sort of a butterfly effect after she's gone. So I think it's about, you know, for me, it, it resonates in a way that, like, does it matter that I go to this protest if the law isn't changed? Like, yes, it does. It yeah. That everything we do has, has an, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, hopefully. We have some fan questions. Yeah. We have a lot of fan questions. Um, Chloe wants to know, uh, who, what, where do you find your biggest inspiration for projects such as Spring Awakening and Once on this Island? And she gave you some sweet little hearts. Well, thank you, Chloe, thank you, for the hearts. Chloe. I hope you're watching right now. Um, uh, where? Let's see. I'm gonna just read What's this. What's your so biggest inspiration? See what? Where? What? Who? What? Where? Okay. Well, who? I would say, uh, in the artists that I love to go see. I'm such a fan of so many artists. Um, you know, from uh, Robert Wilson to Lady Gaga, who strangely enough collaborate together a lot. But uh, and and friends who are performers and actors and writers and other directors. You know, I, I try to go to the theater as often as possible, attend the opera, just absorb as much as I can. Um, and, and also, like, my husband informs and inspires everything I do in a way that is bigger than anything else. So m all of my ideas are his, basically. I just steal my just husband's steal idea. Yeah. yeah, he, like, has the idea, and then I, like... Do we know about him? I, I've never heard about this. His name is Andy Miantis. He's, he's an actor and writer yeah, and yeah, witch. I think, I think we know him. He's a witch. Sounds right. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's and and where I mean I, I don't know I, I would say anywhere from like at the theater to hiking a mountain to like in Andy's arms. How's oh, that for an answer? That's so sweet. I love it. So uh, Emily wants to know uh, what do you hope for the future of Broadway? It's like a really grand meta question. I like it. Um, I hope for the future of Broadway that we find a way to. Um, make it affordable for people to come see. Mm -hmm. I I really hope that there can be a world in which and it's and it does happen, so I just hope that it continues that it's not just celebrity driven. Um and I hope that it is able to reflect back the really amazing patchwork that is this nation. So, you know, yeah, that's what I'm hoping to do as a director on Broadway, you know, offering offering platform for all different experiences. So people can come to the city, come to Broadway, come to New York, the most exciting city in the world, and see a story about someone who might be so, so different than them, uh, that they might have nothing in common with on paper, and by the end of the night be like, oh, I know that person because that's me, in a way. So hopefully, I hope... Creating connections. Yeah, yeah. I hope... Uh, yeah. Theater's always been at the forefront of, of that, I think, so. Sure. Uh, Alexandra, hello, Alexandra, asks, uh, what's your favorite thing about being a director? Um, getting Skip on the question. to, I, the I, question. Didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it, I promise. I'm just, uh, 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 my favorite thing about being director is that I don't have to warm up before the show, and I get to watch artists do amazing things. That's great. It's really a treat. Andy Mientos asks, why don't you do the dishes more? I actually did the dishes today, so. Take that, Andy. So, okay. I did them today. 
So you talked about uh, not Broadway not always being so celebrity driven. So you do have some incredible stars that we know in the show, but the two two lovers, the leads, aren't uh, performers we don't know, right, very well, right? So when Haley Kilgore plays to Moon, tell me about that decision uh, to not, you know, cast a mega, mega star in the lead. Well, it's about a girl who, like, we're meeting her right as she's becoming um, a woman. And so I felt like it was important that, that we discover this character as much as we discover this actor on stage. And more than anything, she gave the best audition in the world. So, you know, I, I feel that for both her and Isaac Powell, who's, who's playing Daniel, and they're both so spectacular. And uh, it's such a treat, too, because I've been that performer, you know, like everybody everybody uh, who is a big star was given a chance by someone, and I'm, I feel so lucky that I was able to offer them this chance. And you made incredible picks. Something's coming in behind me here. We are just, we move things around in the middle. This is part of the storm. That was placed by the lovely Jackie Green. Jackie Green, the one and only. <laughs> she just shushed me. Um, so yeah, I was going to ask you about your research in Haiti. So you went down to Haiti and you got really immersed in the culture and the people there, and you were welcomed into a ceremony as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that and what that inspired for the show. Well, if you haven't been to Haiti, go. Um, it was one of the most eye-opening experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, I just sort of, I've never been to a country that has been hit by such terrible disaster and that, that are having, you know, an it's an incredibly hard thing to recover from. Uh, and so I, I, it made me feel incredibly lucky to live here, to have things like people collecting our garbage and clean water and access to food and medicine and things like that. So um, one, it was, it was very humbling and very, it made me feel very lucky. Uh, but it was an incredible experience I had. I mean, just the the joy and the resilience and the faith of of the people of Haiti and uh, their their pride for their country and their art and their and their music and their culture is, is really inspiring. And uh, I went with my designer, Dane Laffrey, set mm -hmm. designer, and he's we collaborate consistently together. And uh, we were able to like soak in the culture and and so much of what you see on stage if you come to see the show, which I hope you do. Uh, is I mean it's it's literally from pictures we took and places we walked and people we met. Uh, or we really tried to like bring that experience to circle in the square. Um, Look, as a director, you take in all that information, but in your process, I mean, how do you process that emotionally? How do you process that of knowing you're going to take it from a place like Haiti and bring it to a place like New York, and you want uh, audience members to feel welcomed, but also kind of learn and see something new? Yeah, well, w we certainly didn't want to like steal it and bring it back. Um, we wanted to honor it and show show the beauty in this and sort of uh, uh, to find a tapestry that that was both exciting visually but also helped tell our story. So, you know, at the end of the day, my job is really to, like, tell a clear story. And uh, hopefully I can use really honest materials to do that. I don't know if that answered that question. It definitely answers. Casting my, uh, Alex Newell in the role of Mother Earth. Uh, he's a gay man playing a very feminine energy. He's such an amazing performer, and he's beyond fantastic. He actually stops the show. What was that choice? And tell me about it. I mean, again, uh, he was the best person for the job, so he got it. I don't know. It, it was um, the way that I, I wanted to, to do something interesting with the gods in this production. I, it, it was important to me that that kids who come to see this show, is it good? The, ki the, ki the kids to come to see this show, um, that, that come to see this show could look on stage and be surprised yet by by who the gods, how the gods were portrayed. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, without comment, like it was important to me that there be. A, it's important that there's a gay man on stage. There's so many gay men who who behave as mother and father to people, and I was like, why can't it be a man? There's no, and who am I to? Who are we to say like what genitalia gods have? So, yeah. I was sort of like wanted to just let go of all of that and free myself and just hire the best people, and I did. And I think it's exciting to see. In the case, I mean, Alex is such an amazing star and talent. And yeah, so I met him a while back, and and I. I said, oh, I am working on this once on this island. And he said, oh, I, I want to play um, the Lilius White part. And that's what he said to me. <laughs> Strangely enough, he did. But, um, but just that, you know, so often, like, gay characters we see in plays are, like, dealing with some kind of trauma. They're, like, being beaten up. They're having a hard time. They're 
dying of a disease, anything like that. And we have a character who is like living his life on stage, singing for days, and we don't even make a deal of it. So, it, I, I my hope is that people come to see the show and they don't even like realize they realize yeah. that, that there's anything out of place because there's not. That's right. Perfect. And you have Miss Leia Salonga. Do. Who is you know the god of love, and we all just beyond love her. We do. We all love her, and I mean she is like she was. She is. Oh, sorry. She is Erzuli. I mean she's yeah, the most loving, kind person and performer and professional. And I, I want to do every every show ever with with her, and she knows it. Now you hear it, people. First, you hear it here first. Um, to Moon Deserves the World is this person's handle, which makes me very happy. I like her. <laughs> what, or him. It, yeah, it could be either one. Uh, what was it like having to bring something fresh and new to this show that a lot of people hold close to their hearts? Oh, it's scary. I mean, it's scary because like a lot of people have a lot of expectations or loved it the first time. And, you know, the same way when I was working on Spring Awakening, like I loved it the first time and like it was a perfect production. So I think it's just about like my lens it's like i'm looking at it from a different angle um so which is scary and of course like everyone has their opinions and and you know on the show and how it should be done and or how they did it uh but you know we're we're i, I gathered a group of people that i really respect to all bring their ideas to it and this is our collective uh presentation so Brian Jacker, who I love that name. I may have just butchered that. but uh, Jager, maybe. Jager, like Jagermeister. Uh, is there a show that you've previously starred in that you'd like to direct? Ooh. Um, I would love to direct Hunchback of Notre Dame, although I don't know how I would do it better than Scott Schwartz, but I would love to direct that for camera. We would love you to direct that for camera. Okay. <laughs> Keep it short. Olivia Shea wants to know, what has been your favorite theater production to be involved in? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I'd have to say this one. As Edward Albee says, when is the best time now? Always. Love it. So we're going to play a little game. Okay. This is called 10 and 1. We have never gotten this right, but you're okay. going to do it. Okay. So we have 10 it's, questions. It's a good odds. <laughs> 10 and 1, you've never gotten this right. Well, like one time you've gotten no. No, 10 questions in one minute, but it never works. Um, fun fact. Oh, ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're prepared. Yeah. You took your glass of your drink of water. Ready? Uh, fun fact. Your real name is the same as a very famous documentarian who recently had a show on Broadway. We can't say it for licensing reasons. Why do you change it to Arden? Uh, well, I changed my birth name uh, to Michael Arden. My birth name is Michael Moore. I can say it, right? It's m it was my name. Uh, it's legally not anymore. But I had to change it because, one, uh, y when you join the unions, uh, equity, actors' equity, you c there can't be more than one person. It's like a trademark. A name is like a trademark. So uh, there was another Michael Moore. Strangely enough, not the Michael Moore, the documentarian, but yeah. he also existed. Okay. But there was another Michael Moore, an actor, uh, who is now an agent, fab fabulous agent, um, and so I, ha I like had to choose another name, and I chose Arden because this is uh, gonna a minute. It's over. It's it's fine now. Uh, it's like a classic old Hollywood name, so I just I think it's so no, glamorous. No, I was doing As You Like It at Juilliard, and I was I had written some music for it at school, and there was a piece called Into Arden, which is the forest they all run into to mm. escape persecution, and I wrote my name over it and it said Michael Arden, and I was like. That's my name. That's an amazing story. Uh, what was your favorite role with the Pickwick Players, uh -huh. your youth community group, theater group? Um, I loved uh, with them. I, I I played Jesus in Godspell, and that was so fun. And that cast was amazing. And we went to, to Ireland and did the show, and it was awesome. When you toured with Barbara Streisand, soft S, uh, as one of her Broadway boys, how is it that you had only seen Meet the Fockers? I was young and unafraid, and dreams were made and used and wasted. I don't know what to say. I take away your gay card. I was from a very like conservative house in Texas, and there we watched a lot of like I watched Top Gun a lot, but unfortunately I didn't see Funny Girl. So, so at home, who's the boss? You or Andy? Um, <laughs> our cat Eloise is the boss right now. <sighs> uh, would you rather have arms the size of fingers or fingers the size of arms? This is like this a, is this a, is like a word problem. Answer. I think I would rather have fingers the size of arms. 
because I feel like I get a lot done. You could just like climb around. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like an enormous <laughs> spider. It's just a dumb question I enjoy. Page so spider. A page one. Uh, if you swapped in as one of the gods and once on this island, which one? Ooh, um, I want to be. Tonight I would be Erzuli, just because she's got a she's got a really fabulous dress that I'd like to wear. And the, the head and the, piece. And the, the light up USB cable head. Pretty head fabulous. Head. Which I will say, I love the choice of having her first start in her nurse's outfit and then start to transition and then fully transition into the god that she is. Clint Ramos is a genius. That's all him. Um, how often is the water on stage changed? Um, I guess constantly. I mean, there's like a filter going. There's a, it's like a, it's like a, a you know, a pond. So, uh, so, there's, so like it's always changing. It's not really green and musty. No, that's all plastic materials that we put in. I actually heard that question two times in the theater last night. It's a good one. Um, it's been there since the 70s. So what is the, <laughs> what is the goat's name? Please don't say it's Billy. There are two goats, actually. Uh, we have Peapod, okay. and uh, we also have, oh my god, Sparky. Sparky was on first, Peapod was the understudy, but now they really share performances, and they're both doing really well. I'm pretty Peapod, sure I said Peapod. Peapod's really yeah, you saw. I heard Peapod's Pod. the better one. Gives more to the performance. I think they're just both they they're just both come at it in different ways. Yeah, the director would never say that. But uh, what's your favorite curse word? Can I? I can't say this. Um, uh, I mean, I would have to say, fuck. It's such a classic. I like that. It's got a lot of good consonants in it. We only have time for a few more questions. Thank you, everybody, who's written in to ask Mr. Michael Arden stuff about Once on this Island, his incredible career so far um, as well. So Mr. Joseph Bell wants to know, what inspired you uh, to gender bend some of the characters? We did that one. Joseph Bell, you can rewind and hear it again. Um, good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, Heather wants to know, how is, look, oh my goodness. Heather wants to know, how is the river on the set maintained? You see this? I'm not the only one who wondered. We have more questions. Oh, I know. This one is from Mr. Gianfranco Fabio Lentini. Uh, he wants to know, who is your favorite Broadway diva? Ooh, my favorite Broadway diva. Oh, there are so many good ones. Um, so many good ones who aren't with us anymore, unfortunately. But I'd say uh, you, someone who I'm really excited about seeing on stage again very soon is Miss Bernadette Peters. Yeah. I can't wait. It, the last time I saw her on stage was in Little Night Music, which was unbelievable. <laughs> uh, so I cannot wait to see her in Hello, Dolly. January. Soon. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We were here with Mr. Michael Arden. If you missed part of the video, just go back on the Facebook feed, and you can watch it and see it all from the beginning. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, and come see our show. Yes, see Once on this Island playing at the Circle and Square Theater, opening officially on Sunday, December 3rd. Bye, everybody.